So in this in this video, we're going to look at lab for working with ABS. The lab is basically you need to create an Amazon ABS volume. You want to attach and mount that volume to an AC2, and then you create a snapshot of the volume, and then you create a new volume from the snapshot, and then you attach the new volume to your AC2, and you check that the data that you uh, basically created in the previous uh, snapshot, the previous volume is not lost. My lab is ready, so I'm going to access it from AWS. So you can see here, I have access to the management console and the lab instruction now in task one of the lab, we are going to create a new ABS volume. So they are asking us to go to the EC2s. And from the EC2, we need to go and we uh, have in the instances, an EC2 called lab. It's not the bastion host, guys, it's the lab. And now in this EC2, they want us to take a note of the availability zone in which this EC2 is created. And you could see that there is a US East 1A. Now we want to go into the volumes here on the left, and we want to create an U volume. They are asking us to use uh, the volume with general purpose as SD, and the size of the volume is going to be one gigabyte, which is the minimum. And we want to keep it in the same availability zone as the EC2 instance. In my case, it was US East 1A. And then we need to add a tag, and we put the tag name here, going to be my volume now then create volume so this volume is in a creation so i will leave it in a creation and then i will go in step number 11 where we want to select that volume so we need to check the box here beside the my volume and from the action menu we want to choose attach a volume but we have to wait for the volume to finish the creation a process now the volume is available as i can see after i refresh the page select again and then click on attach volume now we want to select the instance which you have two instances here you have the lab and the bastion host remember the bastion host is a security ec2 instance we don't need to worry about it now so we select the lab instance and from the lab instance it will ask us to mount it to slash dev slash sdf and this is what we got here in the device name then attach the volume now in step number three they want us to connect to the volume and using ssh so there is some um, uh, windows uh, um, uh, instructions and there is also some uh, linux uh, instruction however to make it easy for you guys let me show you how we can use this terminal of the lab in order to connect. Now, if you go and scroll down to Mac and Linux user, they are saying there is a Vocarium key, there is the security key of this EC2 instance available to us in the details. Now, a PPK file is for Windows, a PIM file is for uh, basically for Linux and Mac OS. Now, once you download this, it will be downloaded as lab user. I'm not going to use this now, I'm going to show you how to use this terminal here. So if you go into this terminal and you do cd clone.ssh and you do ls, which means list, you will find that the lab user already created for us. It's already have in this terminal. So we could use it instead of configuring putty or doing the whole thing in, in, in Mac. So let me just show you now how easy to access the EC2 from this terminal. We need to go back to the EC2. And if you go to the connect button and you choose, I want an SSH client, they said you need to change the permission of that key to 400. And then you need to connect via this command, which is SSH minus I, the name of the key. In our case, a case it's not going to be Vocarium key. It's going to be lab user, EC2 user at this public DNS of the machine. So let me just copy that, go back, and here I will do the same, SSH 
minus i labs user and this is the default certificate name or the default key value pair name that you get in any of those labs, whether in the foundation classes or even in the advanced uh, cloud solution architecture classes. At EC2 user, at the public DNS name, which is basically this guy here, or you could use the basically, you could use the public IP address of the EC2. If you don't use the public DNS name, they are basically referring to the same thing. I'm going to paste this here, right click and paste it. Click enter. This is going to give you a warning that this is will be added to your known machine. So click yes. And now I am inside the volume. I could verify that I am inside the volume. If you look here to the IP, which is 10.111.84, go back, check. That is 10.111.84. And this is the lab instance that I want to connect. Now, going back to the lab instruction, they say after you connect, you want to put these commands. So these commands here, you need to execute them in the terminal, df minus h. This is will show you all the storage available. And you can see that this is the file system currently um, mounted to the device. This is the actually the boot volume, which is the one we create when we launch an instance is eight gigabyte. And the next command, they want us to create an ext three file system so i'm going to copy this command here right click copy come here right click paste as it is i'm going to uh, run it now we need to make a directory at slash mnt slash data store because we are going to put some sudo data there just to check that we can uh, mount the volume now inside it we want to echo echo means write this statement here into this file inside that uh, directory so we are going to echo copy and paste so this is going to create some data in the data store and now if you want to see the content of a slash etc slash fs tab you just do or use the linux command cat or you just type it or you paste it up to you so this is the content of the file now now we need to do a few more things let me clear this screen so we go all the way to the top and we do df again minus h and you can see now i have slash div slash xvdf there in my um, file structure and then now I need to mount the volume by writing some data into file.txt inside the directory that we create, which is a slash mnt slash data store. And you can verify this. You can go to mnt, for example, tab and then data store. And you can see there is a file here called file.txt. You can just basically view the content of file.txt and you see it's that statement that we just write there into this file. Let me go back to my home directory. This is not in the lab instruction. So you can also verify the content of the file using this command as well. And basically this is give us the same thing. Now we want to create an Amazon Elastic Block Storage snapshot. So we want to go back to the console and we select the volume which is my volume and then from there we need to create a snapshot so this is my volume from action create a snapshot now he is asking us to give that name my snapshot so go back and give it a name my snapshot and then create a snapshot and step number 41 we want to go to the remote SSH session, and now we want to remove the file, file.txt file, which is the one that has content. And we want to see that we were able to restore it from the snapshot that we just created. So let me remove the file. Now you can verify that the whole directory or the whole directory that I just created has no file.txt there. And you see it's empty. You could also verify by going to the directory itself, cd slash mnt, 
slash data store and then ls for listing the files and you can see the file or the this directory is empty now we want to restore the that uh, basically that volume that we just create so we are going to back to our management console to the snapshot and we will create a volume from that snapshot pay attention here because there is a trick just recently they change the uh, console so when you go and create a snapshot the instruction said select volume so you want to create a volume from a snapshot and uh, here in the lab they are say just select name restored volume so if you read this instruction they are not giving you so much details about it now let me go back again let me repeat this step for you so we need to select the snapshot from the action menu we want to select create volume from snapshot and now there is a bug just recently happened if you keep the size one gigabyte it's going to give you sometimes an error so we are going to add now a tag and we call this name let me show you the error that you might get and this is will be restored restored volume now if you click a create that's going to create a new volume to you and that will be the restored volume that you have here now in step 48 you want to wait for the restored volume to be available again so you will need to refresh the page it is available and we do the same thing we go to action and we attach this volume to our ec2 again be careful not to attach it to the passion host attach it to the lab and then attach the volume now go back to uh, step number 53 and then in this case you need to go back to the lab console which is here now let me put these side by side so you can see what we are going to do so i am still connected to the ec2 machine let me clear this and now we need to create another directory just for the new data that we are going to mount from the new volume that we just created or we uh, will use it to restore the data now we are going to mount the new volume into, uh, into slash dev sdg and that will be mounted to this directory immediately so i'm going to go copy and paste this is, will take a few seconds and then now if you go to the ls this directory here and you put that command same as in step number 55 you will be able to see that the lost and found file is just created for us so this is pretty much how you can do the lab it will be much easier to use the terminal if you want to use your own laptop you need to download the pim file or the ppk file that suits your um, lab um, platform and that's all for lab four and the lab and that will be all of it